So the uh, presentation, as it's discussed, is about uh, experiences using IBM Watson. And the motivation for this came because, as many people realized, uh, during the, the Jeopardy experiment, it sure looked like an impressive technology. Basically, take a whole bunch of information and then start, being, start asking questions about it. And when that happened, there was a lot of interest that people had in IBM and that technology, and IBM said, well, that's a research system. We have to make it into a product, and we have to make it uh, you know, ready to be consumed by others. We figured enough time had passed, and so we wanted to see whether you could actually really use it or not. And my team focuses on acquisitions and secure software development. And so we thought an appropriate area would be in general assurance. Because most of what assurance is about is taking a huge amount of information, a variety of documents, stacks and stacks of documents, whether it's mission assurance, information assurance, software assurance, but taking those and looking for evidence that somehow gives you confidence that whatever question you want can be find, can be answered. And so we wanted to see whether we could use this system to ingest all of those kinds of documents and actually give you something. And could this be built by the kinds of skills that you might have in a particular organization? So let me just sort of start with what we learned at a very high level. The first is some good news. Um, you actually do not need to have a PhD in artificial intelligence or natural language processing to build a successful uh, IBM Watson application. And currently, they have the technology sent out on, on their Bluemix uh, cloud systems. So that's why it talks about Bluemix. Uh, something that we learned that uh, you will have to spend a significant amount of time building the knowledge database. And our experience, and when we talked with other Watson developers, the overwhelming majority of the time in building a Watson application is in building this knowledge database. IBM calls it a corpus, so when you see that word, that's what that's talking about. Uh, far more than the application itself. As we'll see in a moment, you also need to have a subject matter expert to help organize what that knowledge will look like. And that was a little bit surprising to us because we expected natural language processing. It should just be able to read it. Uh, and as a result, you also needed end user participation. The expert helps structure the knowledge. But once you have the knowledge, you then have to train the system so it can answer the right kinds of questions. And for that, you basically need to run human experiments with the system in order to elicit the kinds of questions that you want answered to. Uh, and when we compared our notes with other developers in, in Watson, I, I mean, it makes it very easy to connect together with the development community here. Um, that IBM Watson provides one particular kind of uh, capability, but you usually need to augment it with other kinds of artificial intelligence capability as well, natural language capability, if you want to get the, really the full scope, whether it's deep learning networks, there's a variety of other things that had to be aug augmented as well for the actual applications that you read about. So how did we accomplish this? Well, we basically pretended to be a development environment. We put together a team of assurance experts. That was easy. That's what my folks do for a living. Uh, we also got a, some, a team of, of uh, developers. Uh, Python developers, because that's sort of a common skill around here at CMU, not because there was anything special about Python. Uh, but we also purposely did not pick people who were specialists in natural language processing or AI. We wanted people who were good programmers um, and sort of uh, had undergraduate, and we had one graduate student as well helping us. Uh, there were two, basically two phases. We had a sort of a preparatory phase, and these are really effort levels, not calendar time, because people were working on a variety of things. But it was about two weeks of three subject matter experts organizing the information, figuring out what it looked like and what kind of questions to ask, and 11 weeks of uh, got undergraduate and graduate student developers who built the application and built the corpus. So that's what it took for us to build this application. And... There's a whole lot that can be said. In fact, there's a much longer presentation on this for anyone who really wants to see the briefing on it. And there's a tech note being written as well that will come out soon. So there's a lot more detail. But just to give you an example of what the end result might look like, it's kind of hard to read, so I'll talk about it. On the left side is an actual screen snapshot of the system running. On the right side is a Google query. And for simplicity, uh, we've asked the question, what's the risk of a particular uh, event happening in 33C? Uh, in the Watson case on the left, it actually picked out the particular piece of in 33 that, that's a particular rule for doing uh, analysis and 
picked out the actual couple of sentences having to do with risk. Google figured out that it was in 33. All these documents are on the web as well, so Google had access to them. Uh, but then it talked about doing division and multiplication and kinds of things of that sort, and it came up with a variety of other documents. And so the two key measures are what's called recall and precision. Recall, did you pick the right collection of interesting documents? Precision, did you order them in the most interesting to least interesting? Um, we found that in, in our particular test case, very limited, uh, we had both better recall and precision, uh, and we also found, and again, this seems to be consistent with other people's experiences, recall was easy. Getting the system to pick out candidate documents was straightforward. Precision, which is where the user training comes in, was much more difficult to make sure you had the best answer that you could. So what did we learn from this project? We actually learned a couple of kind of surprising things uh, that most people, at least we didn't expect it, and most people we've talked to didn't expect it. Uh, the first comment I'd say is that we had the, the, the theory that we thought, which is on the left, uh, that's the vision that people walked away from the Jeopardy example. You take a huge stack of documents, you toss it into Watson, and then you start asking questions. Uh, the reality is much more what's on the right. Uh, the first thing that has to happen is that you have to, well, uh, the first obvious, sorry, not obvious, but the most important thing that we learned um, is that Watson can only answer questions that are in a single particular document. So one had normally thought, we thought, most people think, that uh, if you had one document that talked about one fact and one document that had another fact, you could put them together. The example that IBM Research uses is, can it answer the question, is Venus or Serena the better uh, tennis player? If you've got a Sports Illustrated article that says Venus is better than Serena, Watson can answer it. If you've got one article that says Venus won three games and Serena won five games, it can't put that together. So you have to have, your answers have to be in a document. And to get precision, you have to take the document and shred it into little shards. So, for example, think about the CIA fact book. If you want to know about the capital of something, you have to be able to extract out the capital out of each page of that as a separate document that goes into Watson. Because otherwise, they'll just bring you back the whole CIA fact book as an answer to every question, which is not helpful at all. So, really what happens is you take all of your documents... Your SMEs then have to be able to explain how to extract all those little bits and shards out of there and put the shards in, and then what Watson's really doing is very carefully selecting out the one particular shard. Uh, that was sort of the biggest thing that we think surprised people, uh, having to both do that and the fact that the answers had to be that kind of limited. Uh, it was also a tremendous amount of training and automation. So when we first started working on the project, the official advice that IBM gives is you need to basically give 50 training questions for everything that's interesting. We found, and again, other independent developers said, that's kind of a very lowball estimate. To give you some feel for this, we had about 1,000 original documents. Uh, so we used common weakness enumerations from MITRE and our own secure coding rules, just as basic documents to ask about uh, building secure applications. That then generated about 15,000 shards, little pieces that you could actually get facts out of. To train the kind of recall and precision that we wanted meant we had to train it with about 150,000 questions. Now, originally when we said you have to train, we thought someone's going to type a couple of questions, our SMEs would give a couple of answers, you're not going to generate 150,000 of them that way. So you have to automate all of that process as well. All of that can be done but that explains why all the effort goes into building the corpus and maintaining the corpus. CWEs change all the time. You have to be able to rescrape them and re-put them in. So, yes, you can do it, but the kinds of things that worked in practice were not quite as expected. We did build this, and in fact, the corpus really is the more interesting thing, not the application itself. Obviously, the government can take our corpus and include it in any kind of application they would like. As it turns out, we've also licensed our materials, in particular the corpus is the interesting thing, uh, to a third party, Spark Cognition, who builds cybersecurity applications based on Watson. They have CVEs and all sorts of other things, and they're adding in our database into their databases as well. So this will continue even after this project uh, uh, finishes as part of our, our research efforts. Uh, we had some help, as I mentioned, at Spark Cognition, the Spark Secure team, the people who built that application, gave us some feedback on their experiences with CVEs. Uh, the IBM team at Watson, they have a partner support program, which we used. Very important, because the documentation doesn't tell you everything, and, and they will. Uh, and we also had Professor Eric Nyberg, who actually was on the original Jeopardy! team, 
uh, as well here at CMU, helping us with some of the user interactions and understanding the natural language processing going on behind the scenes. And our interns, of course, uh, did a lot of the work and are now, because we've publicized them, getting lots of requests for their resumes, which I guess is a good thing. <laughs> so uh, again, if you want the more, the more detailed briefing, we can provide it. The tech note will be coming out.